Thank you for the introduction, Gwen, and I will certainly start with uh, a, a discussion about the latest uh, market uh, fundamentals. Uh, Uranium Energy Corp. is a U.S. company. We're based in uh, Corpus Christi in South Texas, listed in the U.S. on the NYC American, ticker symbol is UEC. Uh, in, the, in attendance, I see many UEC shareholders, so I want to thank you in advance uh, for your support. This is the 13th year that I'm the, running the company as a CEO and founder, so definitely uh, it's been a long, interesting journey, but uh, I believe we've built um, an exceptional company and very well prepared for the turnaround in the uranium market. Here's a standard disclaimer statement. And about a year ago when I was here giving the same talk, I mentioned to you, I made a comment about how not a single uranium mine in the world can make money at the low $20 per pound environment. Remember I called it no man's land? Well, last year turned out to be an extraordinary year for the uranium market. We saw major producers announce uh, production cuts. And this has really moved the rebalancing of the market uh, into the forefront in the sense that uh, we see today the projected 2018 fundamentals for mine production to be at the lowest point in a few years, expected to be about 140 million pounds of production. And demand is expected to be over 180 million pounds per year. The key message is that unlike, unless we see rising uranium prices, I believe we're going to see more cuts. And this was a really key, I think, uh, fundamental message on the supply side in 2017 going into this year. On the demand side, we've also turned the corner. There are now more reactors under construction or operating or proposed or plan than there were in March of 2011 pre-Fukushima. And the sub-story within the main story that I really want to draw your attention to is what's happening in the U.S. The U.S. is experiencing a national security crisis when it comes to U.S. uranium mining. And this really comes down to the following. We are on track this year, the U.S. uranium industry, to have its lowest production of uranium. This is going to sound silly, but it kind of is. Since 1949. Yet there are more reactors operating in the U.S. than any other country in the world, 99 reactors that are generating 20% of the U.S. electricity, 60% of its carbon-free electricity. The domestic industry is on track to produce less than 2% of U.S. reactor requirements. And there's a real extreme dependence on foreign uranium, uh, and this is a national security concern. But jobs are also a concern. There used to be over 20,000 jobs in the U.S. uranium mining industry. That number is down to 560. Fortunately, federally, at the state level, policymakers and government are recognizing this issue. And I really want to draw your attention to a big changing point uh, in the context of what the current U.S. Energy Secretary, Rick Perry, who is the former governor of Texas, had to say about nuclear power. Instead of preaching about clean energy, this administration will act on it. I believe no clean energy portfolio is truly complete without nuclear power, and so does the President. If you want to see the environment and the climate that we live in affected in a positive way, you must include nuclear energy with its zero emissions in your portfolio. Do it safe, do it thoughtfully, do it economically. Under the leadership of the United States, the world can benefit from that. This administration believes that nuclear energy development can be a game changer and an important player in the development of our clean energy portfolio globally. This is a fundamental turning point in attitude in Washington, D.C., in the sense that you now have, as the Energy Secretary of the U.S., the governor, the former governor, and Rick Perry of the state of Texas, the energy capital of the U.S. As governor, he was the longest serving governor of Texas. And of course, our company, being a Texas-based company, we got to know him extremely well. In fact, during the 10 or 12 years where he was governor, our company successfully permitted two uranium mines for production in that state. So we're in a very uh, important position, a position where we have a great relationship and understanding of how the government and at the federal level, uh, people like Rick Perry as Energy Secretary, think about the future. I'm privileged to be in a position to uh, also have as chairman of Uranium Energy Corp, pictured here with myself and Rick Perry, Spencer Abraham. Spencer Abraham, as chairman of our company, was the former U.S. Energy Secretary of the U.S. and also 
at that capacity, when you look up some of the, uh, the work that he came up with and executed, it had to do with national security issues and concerns. So for UEC as a US uranium company, our strategy continues to be the same during the current bear markets that we see for uranium, with uranium prices near a decade low. Number one, we want to remain 100% unhedged. We don't believe in signing long-term contracts with a fixed price and a ceiling. We want maximum exposure to the turnaround in uranium prices. We believe that this downturn represents one of the best windows for acquisition opportunities. And we've been one of the most aggressive companies in making acquisitions over the last uh, five years and de-risking these projects as opposed to depleting, depleting them uh, and uh, mining and selling uranium at the bottom of the cycle. Last year, we announced two acquisitions. And our focus with acquisitions and project development has to do with in-situ recovery projects. And remember, in-situ recovery is an environmentally friendly way of mining uranium with the lowest cost and capital requirements. To demonstrate that, our proof of concept, the Palangana project in South Texas we built in 2010 for $10 million in capex. And we operated it for three and a half years before putting the production on hold. Our operating results, our cash costs were about $20. $2 per pound. This is all based on reported results, not based on just some studies that were done. So we've demonstrated that our team has the full capability to permit, build, and operate this type of low-cost uranium mining. And the reason why we have such low cost also is the fact that we have the infrastructure advantage with our Hobson plant. Before I talk about the plant quickly, last year was a big year for us making a move into Wyoming. We made an acquisition of the Reno Creek project. This was a very accretive acquisition. This is what bottom of the cycle acquisitions look like. For 9% dilution, we increased our measured and indicated resources by 142%. 22 million pounds of measured and indicated resources fully permitted for production on US soil using in-situ recovery, having a US Nuclear Regulatory Commission license of 2 million pounds per year. Ladies and gentlemen, it took seven years to permit this mine. And we bought for $18 million in stock what the private equity group that sold it to us had invested over $70 million over six years to get to that point. The replacement value of these assets are phenomenal, and also the barrier to entry because of permitting in the US taking so long is very high. We announced the second acquisition of what is called the North Reno Creek Project. That deal should close this year. But together, it's given us scale and size in the Powder River Basin of Wyoming. Between our South Texas presence and Wyoming, we now have two bases, two building blocks for future development and production of low-cost institute recovery. Within the Powder River Basin of Wyoming, within a 20 to 50 mile radius, there are three processing plants with idled capacity. So where we can also benefit is the infrastructure availability available within this region of Wyoming and why, again, we made these acquisitions. Last year, when I stood here, I told you about our Burke Hollow project. And I mentioned to you, because of our advantage with the low-cost PFN, prompt fission neutron technology, we can drill and get an instantaneous reading of the grade of uranium, keeping our costs down. In fact, I think I said we're going to drill 130 holes for about a million dollars. I mean, as though that didn't sound good enough, we ended up drilling those 130 holes, and it came in less than $800,000. For less than $800,000 on our own property using our own proprietary technology, we were able to increase the resources at our Burke Hollow project by over 38%. The project this year should receive all of its permits for future production. So on a parallel track, we're doing resource expansion drilling with low cost. We're permitting and de-risking so we can have more production available that could be a source of feed into our Hobson processing plant. The infrastructure advantage we have with 100% ownership of Hobson, that you see the video footage of here, is key. This plant is built. It's ready, a state-of-the-art facility, 45 minutes south of San Antonio, in an area where you can drive right into from all of our projects in South Texas, including Palangana, uh, Burke Hollow, and Goliad. This facility has a physical capacity of 2 million pounds per year. Combined with our new uh, project uh, at uh, uh, Reno Creek in Wyoming, which has a license of also 2 million pounds per year, we now have the building blocks to get to 4 million pounds of annual production using low-cost institute recovery in Texas and Wyoming. And that's just the beginning. And that doesn't include the exploration upside of our portfolio and projects in Colorado and Arizona. A fourth objective and a new objective for us in 2018 and beyond 
will come down to a strategic option that we exercised last year. And it involves uh, basically our in-country know-how and experience in Paraguay, where we exercised an option and acquired a titanium project, a titanium project that was developed and was the, uh, really a, the brainchild of uh, famous ge exploration geologist David Lowell. Uh, we acquired a company called CIC Resources uh, with a titanium resource uh, processing plant for a pilot demonstration site. Over $25 million has gone into this project. And here's the resource that should grab your attention. We put out a 43-101 resource, 4.94 billion tons grading, 7.4% titanium oxide, 23% iron oxide, makes this one of the largest, highest grade ferrotitanium deposits in the world. Are we becoming a titanium company? Absolutely not. We're 100% focused on uranium. Did we get a little bit lucky or maybe in a timely manner pick up a very strategic asset when also the bottom fell out of the titanium market in early 2016? Absolutely. And that's very much the kind of company and entrepreneurial spirit that we have. We'll look to monetize this asset, and as we do, it should be an important value driver for UEC. Finally, we have 156 million shares outstanding, $19 million of cash, market cap of about 250 million US. We're covered by four analysts. Institutional shareholders include uh, JP Morgan Asset Management, BlackRock, Sprott, the KCR Fund, Mr. Li Ka Sheng out of Hong Kong. And our liquidity is about 1.4 million shares a day on average on the NYC American. Finally, at the very end, it really comes down to timing. As I mentioned, 2017 has really rebalanced the uranium market with major production cuts. And the importance of US uranium at a time when US production of uranium is at a 50-year low and completely unsustainable at these levels. Something will be done. We have the infrastructure advantage in the US with our hops and processing plant, the building blocks to become the largest low-cost uranium producer in the US between our South Texas and Wyoming uh, projects. We have permitted facilities for production that is key. We're not depleting our resources at the bottom of the cycle. We're 100% unhedged. And we have optionality with uranium resources in the ground in Colorado and Arizona, projects that we've de-risked with engineering studies and preliminary economic assessments. And finally, the titanium deposits that we have in Paraguay, the Alto Parana project, and uranium projects that we control in Paraguay that give us, again, further optionality and value uh, I really encourage you to take a look uh, at this information further at uraniumenergy.com. That's our website. And I really appreciate your time and attention today. Thank you.